Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the relationship between mental health disorders and violence? Oftentimes when there's a violent act that's covered by the national media, there's this association made between that act and the presence of a mental health disorder or more than one mental health disorder. But does science support this? What does the research literature tell us about mental health disorders and the relationship to violence? Well, let's start with public opinion. There are a number of surveys that look at what the public believes about mental health disorders and violence. And we know that from a 2013 survey, 46% of the public indicated that they believe an individual with a mental health disorder is far more dangerous than a member of the general public. We know from other surveys that 35% of the public believe an individual with a mental health disorder is likely to be violent and specifically when talking about major depressive disorder, 32% of the public believes that an individual with major depressive disorder is more likely to be violent, and 60% of the public believe that an individual with schizophrenia is more likely to be violent. If we look at the other side, individuals who advocate for those with mental health disorders, we see that they oftentimes say there's no difference between the risk of an individual with a mental health disorder and that of the general public to be violent. So that's what the general public thinks on a few topics surrounding mental health disorders, but what does science tell us? Well, we know from the research literature that if we look at the construct of mental health disorders in general, so we're talking about all individuals who have a mental health disorder, there's only a slight increase in violent risk for an individual with a mental health disorder versus a member of the general population. And really, a lot of that risk is focused on just a few mental health disorders. So when we're talking about most mental health disorders, there is no difference in the risk of violence. For a few mental health disorders, there is. Those mental health disorders are schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depressive disorder, some of the personality disorders, and many of the substance use disorders. So how much of a difference are we talking about in terms of risk? Well, if we're looking at individuals with schizophrenia versus those from the general population, without a substance use disorder involved, the risk is about two times as great for that individual with schizophrenia to be involved in violence. If you add a substance use disorder, a comorbid substance use disorder, the risk goes up to nine times. So fairly significant when we look at schizophrenia and comorbid substance use disorder. But just with schizophrenia, it's twice the risk, which of course is meaningful. But a lot of this risk happens when psychosis is present. So this risk isn't spread out over the entire time an individual has schizophrenia, but more so when there is a psychotic episode. We see the same thing for bipolar disorder. The risk for an individual with bipolar disorder compared to the general public is about three times as great, substantially higher with substances, and major depressive disorder three times as great, and again, much higher when we see substance use disorders that are comorbid. As far as personality disorders, about 50% of violent crime has some sort of personality disorder associated with it, but overrepresented in those personality disorders would be antisocial personality disorder and paranoid personality disorder. So we're really not talking about all personality disorders when we look at the risk of violent crime. Now it's important to note that again, overall, when we look at mental health disorders, it's unlikely for an individual with a mental health disorder to be involved in a violent activity, a violent crime, anything like that, over the whole course of their lifetime, just like it's unlikely for any particular individual from the general population. With these specific mental health disorders I talked about, the literature does indicate an elevated risk. There are also some other disorders that have an elevated risk, but not to the same extent we see with these disorders. We also know that in addition to a substance use disorder potentially dramatically increasing the risk, if a mental health disorder is untreated, the risk is greater. So is it irresponsible of the media to associate mental health disorders and violence, particularly to the degree that they do? I think it is irresponsible, and I think it's a bit lazy. And on the other side of the coin, with mental health advocates, some of those say that an individual with a mental health disorder, regardless of the mental health disorder, is at no greater risk for violence. Well, that's not accurate either. I think that we're best served here in terms of helping people with mental health disorders and protecting the general public if we tell the truth. Yes, there's an elevated risk with certain disorders under certain conditions, but there's no drastic risk overall with mental health disorders, and really no drastic risk anywhere. 
So I think we need to be responsible as a mental health treatment community and promote the truth and try to develop treatments that reduce the risk of violence and try to protect the public in a responsible way. So if the association between mental health disorders and violence is so weak, what is causing all the violence that we see? Well, violence is a complex problem, and there are a number of risk factors, and no single risk factor is a cause. There's a difference between something that's causal and something that's a risk factor. Some of the risk factors we know about would be a history of violence, being exposed to violence as a child, age, gender, stress. If somebody's in crisis, that's a risk factor. I mentioned substance use as a risk factor, and we know low socioeconomic status is also a risk factor. We take that with a number of other factors that I did not mention, plus the small contribution that we'd see from mental health disorders. And that leads to violence, or at least we think it does. We know that there's a relationship there when you take all those factors together. They don't necessarily cause violence, but they're associated with it. It's a complex problem. The variables come together in all these different ways, and it's very difficult to tackle. We need continued research to try to get in front of the violence issue and to try to provide more effective care for people with mental health disorders and to protect the public. The incorrect assertion that mental health disorders are somehow strongly linked with violence only makes it so that individuals with mental health disorders don't want to come forward and seek treatment. They understandably don't want to be thought of as somebody that's a higher risk for violence. So this misrepresentation is doing real damage in terms of the ability of the mental health treatment community to reach those in need. I hope you found this description of the relationship between mental health disorders and violence to be interesting. Thanks for watching.